thank you all for being here tonight. Um, it's uh, really just uh, my honor to uh, moderate this conversation uh, in reaction to this incredible film. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, please join me in another round of applause for Sheila Nevins and the production team. Uh, so my name is Jonathan Friedman. I am director of free expression and education programs at the literary and human rights nonprofit Penn America. Uh, our mission is to unite writers and their allies to celebrate creative expression and defend the liberties that make it possible. Um, and in my own work over the past three years, we have been trying to do you know what this film does so well. Uh, which is raise public awareness about the crisis in our schools concerning state censorship and the movement to control the circulation of ideas and ban, ban books. Um, and as you can see, it is a movement that continues to gain uh, momentum. So I'm delighted uh, to talk about this very pressing issue with this esteemed panel tonight um, to my uh, uh, Right, uh, left, I don't know where you are, uh, but uh, you're here. Uh, so Jill Twiss uh, is here, the author of uh, A Day in the Life of Marlon Bundo, an award-winning comedy writer um, from uh, last week tonight with John Oliver. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Peter Parnell, Peter Parnell, who is uh, one of the co-authors of one of the most banned books in the country, and Tango Makes Three with Justin Richardson. Peter is an accomplished playwright whose uh, 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 plays have been produced on Broadway and elsewhere for many years to much acclaim. Thank you. We are also privileged to be joined by Nikki Giovanni, one of the most well-known poets in the world. I should say, a, a writer, an activist, a poet who will not be silenced. Um, and finally, uh, the indomitable Grace Lynn, the mother of liberty, uh, as she says herself. Thank you so much for being here, Grace. Um, so I thought we would just start really quickly with a round of reactions to the film. You know, um, many of you are uh, 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 in the film in some way, touched by it. Your your works are impacted by it. What do you feel when watching this, when reacting to it, about this moment we're in? And we can just kind of start here and go down the line. Um, I think my feeling is both that I'm horrified, but also that it just seems so stupid. <laughs> that I, I, I keep going back to like how small and how weak must your worldview be that my 1,000 word book that has a hedgehog named Dill Prickle is going to upset it. <laughs> and that's what I think when I watch, I just think how smart these kids are and how stupid this idea is. Peter. Yeah, th thanks. Um, I, I think that's, that's right. I mean, when we've been asked in the past, Justin uh, and myself, about uh, how do we feel finding out that our book over the years has been uh, removed or challenged and recently banned, um, it's actually the thing that it, it gets us is the, the kids and the fact that the books uh, won't be available or aren't available. And I think the movie just brings that home so incredibly. So for, for me to hear it f from the very people I want to reach, that we want to reach, it's very uh, powerful, very moving. Yeah, Nikki. Well, I, <coughs> excuse me. I was, uh, of course, very worried at the beginning <coughs> when all of this book banning became, uh, you know, we, we've always known that there were going to be book banning. I was very worried that <coughs> I wasn't being banned. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I started to write the governor a letter and say, you know, what, what, what is this? You know, I, I'm, I'm offensive. <laughs> why, why haven't you banned one of my books? But then they finally banned uh, Rosa. And so I felt a lot better. I, I have more than that. <laughs> you did it. Um, Grace. Grace, if you could use the microphone. Okay. <laughs> I have one. 
haven't been used one of these for a little while. <laughs> but um, I am so honored to be with all of the people that have done the work, especially I want to thank Sheila, who really quickly went on and after she saw my comments to the school board about banning books, and she worked so hard with her crew to get it started and going. And I thank also Trish, who was in my home many times, and Nazinet. I'm I don't know whether I'm pronouncing that right. I uh, I I have to thank you because this has got to go on. It is so important. All of you have a duty to make sure that this is known. Tell your friends. Make sure they watch the film, wherever you see it. Thanks, Grace. Um, well, I thought I would turn to you, Peter, just because I know Entangle Makes Three, you know, it's not a new book, and yet suddenly in the past few years, I know it's been banned all over the country. So as someone who, you know, as a, an author who's written this book a while ago, you know, how do you make sense of what's going on? Yeah, well, f first of all, at the beginning of the movie, uh, of Sheila's film, there's a, a, a group of definitions about challenged, banned, uh, uh, removed. And Tango was published in 2005. And uh, it had a lot of pre-pub, and then once it was published, acclaim, and it was uh, in libraries all around the country. And when challenges began, uh, we were at a, it, it was unusual enough um, that a librarian removing, moving the book from one part of section of the library, from the children's book section to the nonfiction section, because she didn't want parents to be blindsided after a complaint came in. But that was a big enough deal that the local press could write about it, which could then be picked up uh, by the AP, and people could say, why, why this book? And as a result of that, over the f years afterwards, over the six years that the book was considered the most banned book, it was actually the most challenged book. But in almost every case that Justin and I knew of, that we still know of, the book was returned to the library because of what Grace says in the film as well, which is we contacted the ACLU, we contacted the American Library Association, we contacted PEN America and said, you have to do something because it's a violation of the First Amendment of the Constitution. You can't just... Uh, try to remove the book first by challenging it. And so in every case, and there were many, the book was returned ultimately. And what's happened now is that that violation is continuing and going on. And because of the groundswell of the fact that there is so much fear out there, that there is so much uh, that's being, I think, p cynically played politically by uh, people in the country, uh, it's, it's happening even though it is, in fact, against the PICO ruling of 1982 of the Supreme Court, which says you can't remove a book, you can't ban a book from a library on the basis of content or viewpoint. Uh, and it, it takes legal action and it takes activism and all of that to be able to actually fight that. Justin and I were only recently, because of the Don't Say Gay law in Florida, which was specifically being used as the reason legally that the books were being removed in Florida, because of that law, which is unique still, fortunately, at this point, although there are other laws in Iowa that have to do with sexual content in books, but because of the book was removed in two counties uh, on that basis, um, we're suing the state because 
our, we feel we have standing as authors to be able to do that, and that's because of that particular law. So, but, but that's changed. In other words, the climate has, has changed remarkably, and in those early years, uh, when we would go to ban books readings to the readout that the American Library Association gave, we would read our book, which took all of, you know, 10 minutes to read. And Judy Bloom would read from her book, and Steve Chbosky would read from his, her book, from his book. And, uh, uh, and if you talk to, you know, Judy Bloom or you see her, the documentary about her, she'll say how much, uh, how much more serious the situation is now than it was uh, even then, almost 20 years ago. Thanks so much. You know, I think, um, you know, from where I sit, having seen every book ban and every piece of educational legislation over the past number of years, I think what's hard for many of us in this fight is, done, is to kind of remember and to help people understand how much this is ratcheting up. So, you know, you mentioned um, the Don't Say Gay law in Florida. Well, that law, when it was originally passed, was about um, kindergarten through fourth grade. But they've since expanded it all the way to eighth, and then in another administrative move made a set of rules that expanded all the way up to 12th grade. So, um, and what this means right now in Florida is, although for the first two years of this, people were challenging books and then uh, removing books, you know, you'd kind of get into this back and forth about, was the book gone? Would it be gone? Would it come back? Now what's going on is you have a number of librarians, school librarians across Florida, which um, are preemptively pulling books. So nobody's complained about the particular book, let's say in our community, but that other part of the state they have. So let's make sure they, you know, let's avoid any conflict potential, even the potential for the conflict, and remove the book here. And, uh, and now in Iowa, so, you know, in Florida, it's gone from, you know, I don't know, bad to worse and worse. And in Iowa, the new law, um, they have said they're going to release guidance for this new law, SF-496, on December 28th. And all Iowa schools must be compliant by January 1st. So you know that the law, schools of Iowa librarians are waiting until the last possible minute to remove uh, books. Um, but no, that's not true. They're they're pulling all kinds of things. And the Des Moines Register has been collecting surveys of school districts across Iowa, and they have something like over you know hundreds of books that have been pulled already for this law. And so, um, and and it's just happening at such a pace that is utterly astonishing. And it wasn't happening four or five years ago. So I know the most recent history of this, and I can tell you that you know now. LGBTQ books are being challenged left, right, and center, and books about racism are being challenged left, right, and center. And I can tell you that a lot of the energy behind this actually started in reaction to the New York Times 1619 project by Nicole Hannah-Jones, um, and it sort of fed off that backlash. But I'm curious, Nikki, you know, as someone who has probably, as you said, you know, your books have been offensive for, for many, many years, you know, is this, is this really so new in America, what we're dealing with right now? Is this so recent? Well, you know, I think America sucks. And uh, <laughs> it does. I mean, we live here, but it still sucks. But um, <laughs> I think that, uh, thank you. <laughs> First of all, I mean, there is a history. I'm, I'm trying to make sense out of this. Um, in America, let, let me try it this way, because I believe this and I think I can show. In America, the first libraries were the enslaved and the spirituals that they sang to carry their stories. And in coming together to tell their stories through the spirituals, they created an oral library. So to some degree, and I laugh about it because I, I was upset that I wasn't being banned because I know I'm offensive. And I thought it just meant they either don't know how to read poetry or they haven't, you know, they don't, they don't know me. And so, Maybe I should let them know, you know, I hate you, or, you know, something to you know, sort of get their, their attention. But I think we have to start the library with the spirituals. And I think for those of us who are European, however they get that, we're, we're called African Americans, which is not accurate, but however they are, the people with the folk tales. And so we have to say the folk tales were the first libraries for the, for the Europeans because they told 
Little Red Riding Hood, or they told, you know, Rapunzel, lend down, let down your hair. What, what, what is that? <laughs> give, me, give me a break. And, and <laughs> Snow White, you know, Snow White didn't, didn't wake up till she was pregnant. <laughs> no, you read the story. You know, the, the prince came and fucked her, and when she... <laughs> That's what happened. I, I don't, maybe I could say it better, but then Disco took that up, didn't they? And Disco said, you know, put your heavy load down so that we can fucking kick back. And so Disco, I'm just, that's reality. I, I probably am. But we have the libraries that have been verbal. And they were European, and they are in, in, in America, they've been African Americans. Am I making sense here? And I think that we who have library books are very lucky. We're going to lose some of those books. But by having communities like us, or communication like this, or finding the songs like this, or making films, the book may go. The book may burn. And so I'm not indifferent to that. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm saying it awkwardly, and I don't mean to. But the story will continue. Gay people will have their stories. There's, uh, they've been writing those. Uh, these books have been going on for, forever. And the story has been going on forever. And the story about racism has been going on forever. And so to whatever degree we look at it, they can burn the book, but not the story. That's what I'm trying to say, that the song. <laughs> Now, we would rather they not burn the books because I want the T-shirt that says I write banned books. They have one that says I read, and I want the one that says. But, and I'm not indifferent, but you, you, you can't. There's a limit to how much we can let them. Donald Trump can't read. He held the Bible upside down. You, <laughs> you saw that. He, you saw that he walked through the Bible. The Bible was upside down. He can't read. And, and dissent, they, they, they are evil people. And I think that evil is a good word because we always want to talk about love. You can't have one without the other. And so, you know, the reason the devil gets his way a lot is that he doesn't have a job. Devil has no, don't you ever wonder why Joker always makes Superman, Superman has to leave his job and go flying off. <laughs> but the devil, Joker doesn't have anything to do all day but annoy Superman. If you had a job, a lot of this shit wouldn't happen. <laughs> Don't yeah. you think? I mean, I, I, I do think, well, there's a kernel in there. I'm going to be with you 100%, which is, you know, if they read the books, how could they be banning them? And I mean, these websites have, you know, proliferated where you can just sort of, it's like, you know, point and click and play. I mean, in Martin County, you know, one person wrote, you know, scribbled on a piece of paper, you know, they wanted to ban like all 20 books by Jody Pico. And she drove this piece of paper to like multiple school districts and they all just went, oh, okay. And that's how you get, you know, 20 Martin County, 20 books by Jody Pico in Martin County. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't, you know, fit like our idea of like reading and evaluating books. It's just, I mean, it's like a circus, you know, and, uh, you know, and I and I think like you know, was it Dill Prickle is is caught up in this circus? Yes, it was Dill Prickle. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, how do you? I mean, wh how do you fight something that's so silly? That's that's like it, it, you know, do we need more jokes? I don't know. Are we too serious? Um, yes, we always need more jokes. I'm a comedy writer, so I hope that's true. Um. No, I, you know, I think that I'm so naive in this, and I do have great hope in the long term, and I think that we're a little fucked in the short term. Um, she swore first, so I felt like I could. Uh, and the door is wide open. I felt like it was okay. Um, but I, 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 again, I just come back to, like, how stupid these people are and how, like... It's not like this is the first time anyone's come up with this idea, and it's not like those people have ever, ever, ever been on the right side of history. So mm. forgive me, because I get the irony of what I'm saying, but like, my God, crack a book. Like, just read and learn one thing about history before you decide to start banning books. It's just, it's astounding to me how people are incapable of having any perspective on what they're doing and 
how it's never worked before, and why would it be right this time? Well, let me bring that to you, Grace. You're our kind of beacon of history. Of what are we failing to I learn know here? The intellect that these folks are, but let me tell you. <laughs> I've lived. Uh, Grace, would you mind years. using the, mic the microphone? Okay, I'm sorry for you back there. I'll repeat it in a little bit. Every one of you have a job to do. Get your word out there, or we have problems. Protect our children. They need to know the words that they learn from all the books. You need people like Claire over here and Michael who helped me get the word out. Without them, I wouldn't have been able to do what I did. You can do almost anything if you start. I've changed a few of my neighbors a little at a time. It is very important. Just remember this. We have a creator. I don't care what you call him. It's not even a he, maybe. It's just a person. It's not even a person. It's something that we can't even understand. I don't care what the name is. We were all created for a purpose. The where would we be without the GLBTQ community and what they've done? And how about the people that were suppressed with slavery when actually we should have been using more of their human rights ability? We wasted many years. Get out there and do your job Get the word out. You've got such a good start that thank you. Thank you, Sheila. We, we were made by that creator. I don't care what you call him. Everybody is equal, no matter what and no matter how, and see that you treat people equally. <laughs> Especially, let's get our children to get what they need. I just loved it when I heard that you added the children when you came down the third time to Florida. It's a pretty nice place. <laughs> Is it still sunny? <laughs> a heck of a lot more than it is here. <laughs> I've, I've been freezing, but uh, I'm so glad to be among you folks that seem certainly to be interested in what we have to do or we are going to lose our democracy. There is only one other thing I wanted to add. I feel that because we're doing this, we're continuing the fight that my husband had when he was KIA in the World War II, fighting the Nazis who banned books. So that's your first thing to do right away, but just remember, all, e all people are equal, period. Thank you, Jay. Um, so we just have time for one more round here. So I'm just uh, um, on the heels of that, you know, I want to get your, your kind of final reactions, your message to, to everyone today watching about, you know, the freedom to read and, you know, the, the, the message of the film and, and, you know, what you're taking away from it. What is it you think that people need to do and why does, why does, why is book banning something that we all need to stand up against? Am I starting? Yeah, just a simple one for you. Sure. Oh, yeah. Let me solve that problem. Uh, you know, I just think that uh, 
even reading about something that's wrong and that you disagree with completely is, is really good for you. And so I think it's so important. I grew up, I was thinking about what I read when I was a kid. I grew up on Flowers in the Attic. Um, <laughs> should I have been reading that? Absolutely not. Did I turn out okay? Probably not. But, but the point is, I think that the act of reading is good for you. And I think that it's just really important that kids are exposed to all kinds of things. I've, it's, you know, somebody said to us before, and I've had it said to me that like, oh, it's exciting that your book is banned because, you know, maybe it'll increase sales. Maybe it'll, well, no, the kids that need to read these books are the kids whose parents won't buy them these books. And so I just, I do think that it's really important to have books of all kinds that say all sorts of things that you agree with and you don't agree with because you can read them and then you can figure it out. All right, Peter. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I think Sheila's movie is, and what Grace is saying is really important, which is there, there does need to be a groundswell, voices need to be heard. I, I have, there's a, 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 I feel as if it can go different ways, and I don't actually feel that, you know, I've watched the transcripts of the school board meeting at one of the counties in Florida in which parents stood up to talk about why they did or did not want Tango and also some other books that are mentioned in this movie to be banned. And many, many of the parents spoke eloquently and with great nuance and with great passion about why these books, Tango and the others, should be, remain in the library. The decision rested on votes of school board members, but also fears, uh, a feeling of where maybe where the crowd what the crowd wants but it's not because individuals are not uh, 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 with us in this they they are and they are all around the country I mean in Florida it's you know I watched this meeting and thought my god there's some really wonderful thoughtful reasons that are being grappled with in this community so I think the more that we can do it will, there, it, there is, it, it, it comes back to us. I mean, we're a culture, we're a culture that l reads the news and the headlines and TV and there, something, I think, it's, you know, Marlon Bundo says, you know, stink bugs are temporary, love lasts forever. And I think that there can, we can, we can affect a change. I just think we have to all do it, but it's, it's possible. It's Thank you. So why, uh, why should people be allowed to be offended? <laughs> well, the most important thing, uh, evolutionarily speaking, that humans have taken that next step is words. And so we've talked about books and we've talked about what, but all of this comes from words. So words are important. And I mentioned a couple of words. I said, I really forget what, but disco was all about fucking. And I mentioned that. And so. Hey, you know, somebody said, oh, that's a bad word. No, there's no such thing as bad words. And for those of us who know our jazz, someone once asked Thelonious Monk, you know, you've been playing these um, wrong notes. You know, wh why do you play these wrong notes? And Mr. Monk just looked up and said, piano ain't got no wrong notes. And there are no such thing as bad words. And we have to hold on to the words which make the books, which make us free. You've heard it all. <laughs> and I say, you've got a job to do. It is dangerous for you not to do it. We come close to losing our democracy. Think about that. If you lived 101 years like I have, you've seen a heck of a lot. And yes, I can say, let's kick ass. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, thank you all. Thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you to all of our panelists. Before we close out, um, we have a uh, special message from the film's producer, uh, uh, Trish Atlasik. Yay, yay. Come on down. This is your red carpet moment. <laughs> I understand from Yay Yay's mother, Naz, that she really wanted a red carpet moment for the film. <laughs> Naz and I are Sheila's bookends for the film. And um, in addition to all the amazing things Sheila has taught us. <laughs> there you go. Come on. Yay, yay. Um, uh, a couple of additional things that everyone should know. Uh, Outside of Sheila's brilliance in documentary filmmaking, there's so many of you in the room here that have been impacted by her grace and just extraordinary wit. Um, she told me two things while we were making this film that I should always remember. Before every meeting, get a blow dry. <laughs> and make sure when you're in a room full of men, when you start that meeting, you tell a joke. So I'm going to tell you a quick joke. Why was the scarecrow up for an award? Because he was outstanding in the field. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So we have a surprise special guest. And I would ask all of you who can stand, if you would stand, please. If you can't, we understand. Uh, we want you to stomp. And we want you to swish out book banning. So please welcome Little Miss Hot Mess. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Thank you all for being here to celebrate this film and to stand up against banning books. The best way to do that is to make our voices heard, to swish and shimmy and snap all of that hatred away. So I am going to lead you in a round of my book, The Hips on the Drag Queen Go Swish, Swish, Swish. <laughs> Written by yours truly, Little Miss Hot Mess, illustrated by Olga de Dios, and you probably know the tune already. So we're gonna start with our hips, and we're gonna go. The hips on the drag queen go swish, 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 swish. The hips on the drag queen go swish, 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 all through. The hair on the drag queen goes up, 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 as high as you can, up, 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 up. The hair on the drag queen goes up, 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 all through the town. The shoes on the drag queen go stomp, stomp, stomp. Let me hear you stomp, 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 stomp. The shoes on the drag queen go stomp, stomp, stomp. All through the town, the jewels on the drag queen go bling, 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 bling. The jewels on the drag queen go bling, 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 all through the town. The shoulders on the drag queen go shimmy, 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 shimmy. The shoulders on the drag queen go shimmy, 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 all through the town. The cheeks on the drag queen go blush, 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 blush. The cheeks on the drag queen go blush, 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 all through the town. The fingers on the drag queen go snap, 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 snap. The fingers on the drag queen go snap, 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 all through the town. The mouth on the drag queen goes blah, 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 blah. The mouth on the drag queen goes blah, blah, blah. All through the town, big finish. The dance of the drag queen goes twirl, twirl, twirl. So it might be hard. Twirl, twirl, twirl. Twirl, twirl, twirl. The dance of the drag queen goes twirl, twirl, twirl. All through the town. Woo! Thank you all for swishing and stomping and snapping. Take that home with you. Little Miss Hot Mess, everyone. Thank you. On behalf of New York Public Library, 
we'd like to spend, uh, thank everyone for being here. Please just join me one more round of applause for Sheila Nevins and the film. For all of our panelists, for Grace Lynn, 101 years old, young. And please join us in our fight against book bans. You can find out more information about us at pen.org slash action. Let's kick ass. Thank you all so much.